everyone. My name is Becca and welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you are here. If this is your first time with us, welcome. And if you've been reading with us before, welcome back. Uh, today we are in for a treat because I'm going to read uh, the first chapter, sort of, for a work in progress. Now I say sort of because today is going to be a little bit like a first chapter Friday with a twist. And the reason being that this is a novel in verse. Now, if you've never heard of a novel in verse before, a novel in verse is written in a little bit more of a poetic form instead of your traditional novel format. So that being said, the first uh, chapter of this book is a bit extensive. So we're gonna read the about pages one through 20 of A Work in Progress. Um, this book really, really drew me in. Um, it's the second novel in verse that I have read. And I have to say, I'm really, really growing to enjoy the format. And I think you will too. So if you haven't given a novel in verse a chance yet, pick up this book, you'll love it. Um, let me go ahead and read you the synopsis, which is on the front and side sleeve. You're fat, Nick Fisher said, and the whole entire hallway fell silent. And then he said it again. You're fat and everyone thinks it. Something like that happens to you. Something like what happened to me in fourth grade and it never leaves your head. It's in there forever, permanently. And it's not long before you don't even need the Nick Fishers of the world to be there to tell you what they think of you. You become your own bully and you do the job better than anyone else possibly could. Can anyone ever love themselves, warts, roundness and all? Can anyone ever accept that they will always be a, world, a work in progress? Can Will Chambers? All right, so Will Chambers is our main character. Uh, let's see if uh, let's see how he comes out of this. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right into those first 20 pages that I spoke to you about. And uh, teachers, if you are reading this or watching this with your students, there is in the description a link to a free handout for them to follow along. All right, let's dive in. I am gonna show you guys the pages a little bit because uh, Will Chambers does do a lot of uh, doodling. <clears throat> I always think back to fourth grade. I was minding my business, hanging out in the hallway with Dave and Andrew and Devin when I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around and saw a kid, Nick Fisher, standing there. Nick was in my grade and small for his age. In fourth grade, he looked more like a third grader or even a second grader. And I don't know if it was because of that or because of something else he had going on in his life, but he always went around already halfway to angry. He was the kind of kid who'd snap at you for no reason if you just looked at him the wrong way on the wrong day. All of which is why I was kind of worried when I turned around and saw it was Nick who tapped me. That and the fact that he was already scowling. I knew right then that whatever his reason for getting my attention, it couldn't be good. You're fat, Nick said. No, 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 he spat it. That word. He spat it at me like it was the worst one he knew. Like I'd committed a crime and he wanted to make sure I knew I was guilty. You're fat, Nick said, and the whole entire hallway fell silent. Everyone was looking, everyone was listening. And then he said it again. You're fat and everyone thinks it. At first, I was too stunned to do a thing. My brain was racing, my heart pounding, but the rest of me, frozen stiff. All I could do was stare at the, star at the shark showing off its teeth on Nick's t-shirt. Then Dave, he set his hand on my shoulder and whispered, Will. 
and for whatever reason, that broke the spell. And then I got out of there as fast as I could. I fled. Something, that, <clears throat> something like that happens to you, something like what happened to me in that hallway with Nick Fisher in fourth grade, and it never leaves your head. It's in there forever, permanently. The memory might as well be tattooed on your brain. It'll replay again and again and again and again. On bad days, of course, but on good days too on days that had been good until bam. It sneaks up on you. It just pops out, out of the blue. And it's not long before you don't even need the Nick Fishers of the world to be there to tell you what they think of you. That the whole entire world, I'm sorry, what the whole entire world thinks of you that you are less than, you are inferior, you are an animal, not worthy of kindness or consideration or respect. Soon enough, you take care of saying all that for them. You start thinking just like they do. You start hurling the insults at yourself. You become your own bully and you do the job better than anyone else possibly could. I hid. That day, after Nick said what he said, I hurried out of sight, barreled into the first bathroom I came across and locked myself in a stall. I ran away and hid. I sat there in that cramped, stinking stall on the gross, dirty toilet and tried and failed and tried and failed to catch my breath and keep the tears from pouring out and drowning me. Dave and Andrew and Devin found me eventually and they said all the right things, or maybe not the right things, but all the things right then that I wanted to hear. They called Nick a jerk, an idiot, a loser. They made a bunch of jokes about how short he was. And little by little, it cheered me up, even though part of me didn't want to be cheered up. Finally, I unlocked the door, stepped out of the stall. My friends looked happy. They looked relieved. Devin smiled, Andrew grinned. Dave gave me a fist bump and grabbed my shoulders for a squeeze. And I knew right away that they thought it was over. That the whole ugly incident with Nick could already be put behind us. We could move on, get back to our regularly scheduled lives, which did not include anything as serious or dramatic as all that happened that day. And I went with it. Standing there in the bathroom with my smiling, happy friends, I decided to pretend that all that was true. Why? I didn't really understand it then, but I get it now. In that moment, I felt like I should be thankful that Dave and Andrew and Devin had gone through the trouble of finding me, of cheering me up. Like I should be thankful they still wanted to be friends with me. Me, a fat kid who everyone thought was fat and less than. I felt all of a sudden like they had been and were now doing me a favor by letting me be friends with them, even though I was fat. And I felt like I was now on borrowed time. Like if I was a downer about all this, if instead of smiling along with them, I broke down like I wanted to and cried, they'd decide it wasn't worth it. They'd stop being so generous and kind. They'd cut me out of their lives right that very second. And then I wouldn't just be fat. I'd be fat and friendless, 
which back then I was pretty sure was the only thing worse. So I wiped away my tears. I mopped up my snot. I put on a smile. And instead of hiding in bathrooms, I learned how to hide in plain sight. All right, that's where I'm going to stop. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really, really feeling for Will. It sounds like he is going to really go through it in this book. Um, so if you can relate to this book, if you know someone who can relate to this book, definitely grab it. It is an awesome read. And um, let me know in the comments if you do decide to read it and what you think of it. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and of course, let me know if there's any awesome books that you would like me to read the first chapter of. All right, friends. See you next time.